So let's jump right in. These are the subjects that we're going to cover today. First of all, we're going to very briefly define what sign translation is, and then we're going to look at interpreting the step method. And finally, we're going to look at how to master sight translation using our three-step methods. Again, whether you are using our materials or not, you're going to be able to apply this to your study sessions. So let's begin with sight translation. So basically, what sight translation is, is the only type of mode of interpretation in which the input is written. So usually, we receive an input, we process the information, and we create an output both in consecutive interpretation and in simultaneous interpretation, that input that we're receiving is a, an audio information. It's an oral message, or in the case of sign language interpreters, is a language, it's a message expressed in sign language. What makes sight translation unique is that the input that you're receiving is not a message expressed in sign language or orally, but a written text. So when you are going to sight translate, you receive a text message, you receive a document, you receive a form, you read it first fully, you get to understand it, and then you're going to render it out loud. Your output is going to be either oral, in spoken words, or in sign language if you're a sign language interpreter. So that's what makes sight translation unique, that your input is written. So defining sight translation in a nutshell, it means expressing the meaning of a written text in another language either orally through spoken words or through sign language. So that'll be our working definition for this mode of interpretation. This mode of interpretation is often the most neglected one. Um, many people uh, tend to focus more on consecutive and, and simultaneous. And then when they get to the test, they feel lost in the, in the sight translation um, portion of it. So that's why we've designed this three-step method to help you get the most out of your time. And basically what you're going to be doing is the first step, you're going to be learning the vocabulary by heart. And we've created several tools for that. If you're not studying with our material, I'm going to teach you how to do that on your own. Secondly, you're going to be interpreting. So you're going to voice record yourself, always voice record yourself, and you're going to be interpreting out loud into that voice recorder. And finally, you're going to be doing an evaluation. This is such an important step when you are studying it's so important for you to listen to your voice recorded performance and analyze how you did. So we're going to look at each one of those steps. So first, let's talk about why. Why do we take this methodology? Why do we take this approach to studying? Well, simply put, to interpret accurately, you have to be able to get into a flow. So what happens is that if you're constantly being stopped by unknown terminology, you're not going to be able to reach that flow. And if you don't reach that flow, you can't develop those skills. You need to get into that flow in order to begin developing those skills. But when you're facing unknown terminology, that can mess up your flow. So if you're doing a practice and you're not familiar with the vocabulary, as soon as you start focusing, you begin understanding the message and you begin to accurately express the meaning of that message you bump into unknown vocabulary and that throws you off balance. So any flow that you would have uh, reached to get to those, to that level of being able to, to perform and develop those skills is going to be interrupted by unknown vocabulary. And the more terms you don't know, the harder it is to get your groove back. So to interpret accurately, the most important thing we can understand about the task of interpretation is that to interpret accurately, your brain has to be able to multitask efficiently. You have to be able to do many things at the same time. Now, neuroscientists have studied what happens in our brain when we're interpreting, and it is one of the most demanding multitask um, uh, mental processes that um, is, has ever been analyzed. So when we're interpreting, there's a lot going on in our brains. So we have to be able to multitask efficiently in order to faithfully convey the meaning of a message. So I like to think of a, a good way to understand what our brain is doing when we're interpreting. I like this, uh, the acrobatic juggling metaphor. So I want you to imagine that interpreting is quite like being on a tight rope, riding a monocycle, and juggling balls in the air. There's a lot going on in our brains when we're interpreting. So if we were to try to do what this lady's doing, it would be completely silly of us to say, okay, let me go on that monocycle, let me go on that tightrope, and let me get balls in the air. 
that's not the way we're going to be able to accomplish such a complex task. The only way we're going to be able to master a task like this is if we divide and conquer, meaning we first have to learn how to be on that tightrope. Then we have to learn how to be on a monocycle wow. on that tightrope. And finally, we have to be able, be able to add the juggling. If we, if we try to embark on the task of doing them all at once, it's going to be virtually impossible. That's the same thing that happens with interpretation. So that's why we divided this up in three steps. The first step is going to be to learn the vocabulary, as I mentioned. We want you to have native command of both languages. That's the only way you're going to be able to pass these tests. So first, that's the normal vocabulary, uh, regular vocabulary that you should know. But secondly, you have to have mastery of the specialized vocabulary. And that's what step one takes care of, helping you master that specialized vocabulary. Once you feel like the vocabulary is no longer a tight rope and it's actually a solid ground, we begin to add things on and we begin to add the juggling of the interpreting skills. So you're going to be uh, learning how to juggle these skills in the most efficient, efficient way possible so you can elevate your comprehension, you can gain speed, you can gain accuracy, you can gain cultural competency. What does that mean? Sounding natural, being able to understand what it means in the original language is cultural competency, and then being able to express it naturally in the target language so it doesn't sound like a contrived interpretation. So again, to master a complex task, the most effective approach is to divide and conquer. And that's exactly what this method does. So you tackle each subtask separately until you ace them, and then you put them back together and you try them together. So the first step we're going to be doing is the vocabulary, then we're going to be dealing with the interpreting skills, and finally, the third step is going to be the evaluation. You're going to grade yourself. The first 10 labs of our practices are all without specialized vocabulary. And the reason for this is that skill building is the cornerstone of an interpreter's training. So you'll notice that the first 10 labs have no specialized vocabulary. Okay, we want to get a solid ground. For those of you who are training with our program, you'll begin those 10 labs. For those of you who are training on your own, try to work with any type of text for site translation that is general. You can go online and research reading comprehension texts. You can research short stories. You can research documents that are general, that don't have specialized vocabulary. And you first want to get comfortable with just being able to read a text, understand it, and then trying to render it faithfully. If you don't have this skill of being able to cite translate accurately, you won't be able to get to the next step, which is the vocabulary. So we want to get those skills solid at first. So this initial stage is all about honing those skills, elevating your comprehension, gaining speed, increasing your accuracy, sounding more natural. Doing these first 10 labs, if you're working with our materials, or doing any type of practice that doesn't have specialized vocabulary until you're comfortable with those skills is crucial for your success. So don't skip these. Once you have developed your interpreting skills, then we can begin to add on. Then dealing with the specialized vocabulary from lab 11 on, if you're working on material, is not going to throw you off balance. So in the first 10 labs, we have included warm-ups. Now, if you're working with our materials, you'll just follow the instructions that we give you. If you're working on your own with a different set of materials, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be applying different types of warm-ups to, um, to your practices without vocabulary. And you can find these warm-ups in uh, different sources if you look up uh, site translation warm-ups. But don't skip this step of first feeling comfortable with the cognitive skills of site translation because they will bring your skills to the next level. Now, once you've finished the first 10 labs, or if you're studying on your own, once you've finished feeling really comfortable with this skill, then you're going to be moving on with practices with specialized vocabulary, but not before. Now, the good news is that we're going to give you everything you need to learn this court terminology by heart. So the bilingual terminology is absolutely automatic to you. So to, these are the tools you're going to be using in step one to ace the vocabulary. First, we're going to give you slides. Then we're going to give you drills. And finally, we're going to be giving you 
target practices. So let's take a look at these tools. And I'm going to tell you how to create these tools for yourself if you're not working with our material. So again, this is our platform and this is the course that we're offering, the Site Translation Labs. This particular one has three months access. And uh, for those of you who wish to enroll on this course, you'll be um, able to log online and have four classes with me. We'll be having a group of people joining us. But if you want to work on your own, you can do that as well. So as I was saying, it has an instructional video that teaches you how to use the material. Then we tell you how to read the vocabulary, the symbols that are within the vocabulary. And then as I mentioned, the first 10 labs have no specialized vocabulary. And we describe to you exactly what those documents will be. So for example, in this case, um, lab number eight is a divorce case. It's in English. It pertains to family court. And it's a wife alleging that her husband is having extramarital marital affairs. It's kind of a soap opera. Then we move on to the labs that do have specialized vocabulary. In this case, from lab 11 on, this case, this particular um, document is a criminal record. It's in Spanish. It has general court terminology, and it's a document that's reporting the results of a criminal background check. So let's take a look at this one. So we click on the lab, and then that's going to be taking you to the three steps, as I mentioned, the third step to know the vocabulary. So you have these different tools to work with. Now, for those of you who are working on your own, what you're going to do is you're going to skim the document that has specialized terminology, and you're going to identify which terms you're not familiar with, which terms don't roll off the tongue when you try to say them in the target language. And then you're going to make a list of those terms and you're going to research them. And you can create study cards for them. Let's begin with our target practice, the way our target practice works. And also, we also offer you always instructions on how to use each tool. So this little eye up here in the corner is the instructions on how to use that tool. So here we are with the target practice. And then what's going to happen is the good thing about the target practices is that you can focus in a targeted way only on the vocabulary that you want. So if you are feeling that you are um, more comfortable with some terms than others, you don't have to waste your time. For example, if we feel like Ministerio de Justicia is a term that we would like to learn, then we reveal it and we see it and then we hide it again. Okay? Let's say, as you can see, the term gets green so that we can know which one, which one of the ones that we played with. Let's say that I feel comfortable with everything except this one, antecedentes penales. I reveal it, I see it, and then I hide it again. And then I go through them and I go through the ones I want to study. Now, once I've done that, I go back to the ones that are green and I interpret that out loud. When you're studying the vocabulary, it's always a good idea to interpret those terms out loud, not in your head, because the more active you are, the quicker you're going to be learning. So in this case, I look at the term, I say it out loud, and then I see if I got it right or wrong. I do the same thing with all of them. I say it out loud, and then I reveal it. Now, let's say we just want to focus on these terms. We hit submit. And this now helps us to grade ourselves, to see how we're doing. Again, we say the term out loud, we reveal it, and now we can say I got it correct or I got it incorrect. We say the term out loud, we reveal it, and I grade myself. One last time, say this one out loud, reveal it. And let's say we got that one correctly and we finish and it congratulates you as you deserve, and you can move on to the next one. So that's how it works with this particular tool, with the vocabulary uh, for target, okay? Now let's go back home, and let's go to our slides. Now, the slides are really cool, and it's what I suggest that you do if you're working on your own, is not just research those terms, but create a sentence with those terms. Our brains are really wired to associate and to make relationships. So if we learn an isolated word, our brain is not going to make as many connections and it's going to be harder for us to retrieve that information. But if we create a sentence for it, that association is going to be able to prompt our memory much more effectively. 
So we have created sentences for each one of the terms. So here you can see the term at the top, and then you can see a sentence that we've created for you. Again, you're always going to try to interpret that sentence out loud. Once you've interpreted it out loud, you go to the next slide, and then you'll see the term at the top, the different options to interpret that term, and then you're going to see the sentence at the bottom. And you're going to continue doing that, interpreting the sentence out loud and then moving on. Now, if you're studying on your own and you're creating your own material, as I said, it's always a good idea to create flashcards. You can put the term at the top. You can put the sentence at the bottom. Then you flip the card. And on the other side, you put the target language sentence. That sentence has been translated now at the bottom. And you're going to study by looking at the front of the card, interpreting out loud, and then going on to the next card. So that's the beautiful thing about the slides, that they give you context, okay? We're going to go back to the last tool that we have in step one, which are the drills. And the drills are really cool because they give you lots of uh, different activities that you can do. So. We have flashcards, we have uh, ways to memorize, activities to memorize, we have a quiz, and we have a match game. The gravity game is really not suited as well for this material, so we're gonna focus on these four. So, again, the flashcards are what I already explained, but in this case, you can just look at it here and then flip it, and then you move on to the next card. And then you say it out loud, you flip it, and you move on to the next one. Now, when you are learning a new term, if a term is uh, new to you, always focus on the first one. So for example, in this, let's look at the previous example. We give you all sorts of different options, but you don't wanna overwhelm yourself with so many different options. So what you wanna do is just focus on the first one. We give you different options because if you're a seasoned interpreter, you might say, well, that first option is not the one I use. Let me look through here to see if I've learned something else that is correct. If you already know something else, move on with it. Don't try to relearn something that you already know. One of these options, you got it, that's fine, even if it's the last one, okay? If you're working on your, on your own material, then make sure you research one or two definitions, one or two target language equivalents, and stick to those. Don't overwhelm yourself with too many options because then it's going to make memorization much more challenging. Okay, so this is the way it works with the flashcards. Now, you can also memorize. And then in this case, when we're memorizing, you're actually going to be grading yourself as you go. So you say the term in the other language, you show the answer, and you say, oh, I got it right. Then you say the term, always in the target language out loud, you show the answer, and you say, oh, I got it wrong. And then it starts keeping score. It'll start telling you what you're getting right and wrong. And at the end, you can just focus on the ones that you got wrong. So that's the memorization part. Now the quiz, it's multiple choice. So you're going to be saying, okay, Ministerio de Justicia is Justice Department. It tells you if you're correct or incorrect. You move on. Let's say this one, let's get it wrong. And it's gonna tell you incorrect. And it's gonna tell you this was my answer and this was the correct, the correct one, okay? So that's the quiz. We recommend that you get at least 80%. Now, if you don't have this, if you don't have, um, if you don't have our material and you wish to study on your own, I recommend that once you've researched the vocabulary, you go into flashcards by NKO, and that's an app that you could download in most smartphones and most tablets. So again, flashcards by NKO, N as in Nancy, K as in kangaroo, and O as in olive. And then what you do is you input the information there and it creates different games for you, okay? So that's how you can work on your own. Now, I love this game, this is a match game. So what you're going to basically be doing here is you're going to be matching things up. So for example, the word certify, we match it here with certificar and it disappears, okay? So here we have under the name of, a nombre de, and it disappears. So as soon as you match the right things together, they start disappearing, okay? If you try to match two things that don't work together, oops, if you try to match this one, for example, with this one, it won't disappear and it won't let you do that. Okay, but you're going to be doing that until you match them all up. Now, the beautiful thing about the drills, as I mentioned, is that you're bombarding your brain from different angles. So you 
to get to memorize things, you have to repeat them. I mean, it's very, very difficult to memorize a lift of 50 words on the spot. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be um, playing different games. And again, you can play our games on our platforms, or if you're studying on your own, you can put them into flashcards by NKO. Once you feel comfortable with this vocabulary and you've bombarded yourself with different tasks, you're going to be able to readily um, retrieve that information. And that's where we want to be in that sweet spot to move on to the next step. So that takes us to step number two. Now, this is the document. We give it to you. You can either do it from the screen or you can print it. Whether you're studying with our material or you're studying on your own, it is very, very, very important to always record yourself. And it is very, very important before you record yourself to do um, a full reading of the text. So let's go back to the presentation. So those are the tools that we're going to be dealing with in step one. Now, what do I suggest that you do? That you do these activities repeatedly on the go. One of the things that I think happens a lot is that we have this idea that studying means I'm sitting down and doing nothing else but studying. And the truth is, many of us are busy and you can't really study every day for two hours. Also, you're going to have a lot of vocabulary to memorize to pass a test. And you're not going to be able to cover all of that material if you just say, I'm going to sit down twice a week to study. So the most important thing is to do step one on the go. Okay, so you're going to be carrying your device with you and you're going to be studying any chance you get throughout the day. You're going to be practicing any chance you get, okay? You're going to be amazed at how much extra time opens up if you are willing to study during your commute. If you use public transportation, please don't get into an accident if you're driving. But if you take the train, if you take the bus, if you take Uber, if somebody takes you to work, then you go ahead and you study that vocabulary. If you're working with our material, you can use it on the go. You can use it on your phone. You can use it on your, on your um, desktop, on your, on your uh, laptop. You can study during lunchtime and during breaks. So uh, start thinking outside the box when it comes to study time of that step one, learning that vocabulary. You can study during wait time. As interpreters, we have a lot of wait time. So if you're already working in court, what you're going to be doing is carrying that device with you. Or if you've created flashcards for yourself, those physical you know, index cards, carry those. Or if you have the NKO flashcards, you're going to be using those during all of the time that we have, the wait time that we have. Okay, take advantage of that time. Once the vocabulary from step one is in the bag, you're going to love the results that you're going to be getting once you sit down to do steps two and three. Then it's going to be super smooth. So again, step number two, the interpretation. We have gathered real court documents from the United States, from Colombia, from Venezuela, from Santo Domingo. We've only changed the identifying information. So you're going to be working with the real deal. If you're studying on your own, always go online and try to find materials that are real so you can get used to what you're going to be faced with. So let's go back and take a look at that step number two. So as I mentioned, in step number two, you're going to have the two options to print it. I would suggest if you can print it, do so because it tends to emulate the conditions of a test or the conditions of how it's going to work in real life in court. And you're going to give it a full read. You're going to read it just with the purpose of understanding it. And then you're, once you feel you've gotten it, then you start your voice recorder. So in step two, as I mentioned, you're going to be recording your interpreting practice. You, if you're going to be working with our material, we advise that you use a digital recording device. You can use a smartphone, you can use a tablet, you can use a digital recorder. If you um, record yourself digitally, that can be played directly on our platform. And that makes step three much, much easier. So some tips for step two, whether you're working with our material or not. Before you begin your site translation, always read the full text. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. They don't do that. They don't read just with the, comp with the, with the goal of comprehension. 
And simply put, you can't interpret what you don't understand. The first step to interpret faithfully is to understand the original message. Once you have fully read and understood the text, then and only then move on to the interpretation. And when you're reading that text for the first time, try to shut off your internal interpreter. Try to stop worrying about how do I say this in the target language? I don't know if I'm going to be able to come up with that term. Your only goal is comprehension. Once you understand that text, I promise you, your brain is going to be able to do much better than if you have a very uh, fractured uh, uh, take of that text. Once you begin interpreting, it's showtime. Don't stop no matter what. The show must go on, okay? If you don't know a term, you do your best. If you got nothing, you say it in the source language, just the way it's written, or you skip it. But once you begin step two, don't stop. Keep interpreting no matter what happens. That's how you're going to get to that level to, to, um, uh, to polish those skills. And also, if you're actually taking the test, don't hesitate. Just keep going. If you don't know something, move on, okay? Because that can throw you off. Once you begin that whole process of starting and stopping, that will get you more nervous and it will also make you sound less confident. So if you're working with our material, once you finish step two of the current lab that you already prepared the vocabulary, you're going to do step two for the following lab, for the lab that you don't know the vocab yet. So interpreting without learning the vocabulary ahead of time is what we call the blind run. Now, Blind runs are great because for your training because they prepare you to handle the unexpected. So the three-step methodology has the great advantage of helping you get to those higher tasks, helping you get into a flow and being able to develop your skills. But we don't want you to get used to always facing a text knowing all of the vocabulary because there's no way that's going to happen in a test. So you're going to have to train yourself to know how to handle when you don't know certain vocabulary units. And that's why we do the blind run. Being able to handle unforeseen terms is crucial when taking a test. It helps you avoid freezing and it helps you to train you to keep interpreting no matter what comes your way. Step two, another tip, repeat the same lab. So if I prepared the vocabulary for lab number 11, I'm going to do lab 11 at least two or three times. And then I'm going to do lab 12, for which I don't know the vocabulary, at least two or three times. So you're going to do the current lab, and then you're going to repeat the blind run. Okay? Now, repetition is really important because it lets you squeeze every last drop out of each interpreting practice. Some students think that repeating the same practice is like cheating, but nothing could be further from the truth. This misconception is probably responsible for many failed interpreting tests. When you're not familiar with a practice, your brain is mostly preoccupied with handling unexpected elements. So you're going, oh my God, what's going to come next? Oh my God, I don't know if I know how, that, how to interpret that term. Oh my God, I don't know if I'm understanding. That's what happens during the first take, during the first time you try a practice. So other than learning to improvise, which is important for a test, you're not significantly building your interpretation skills on that first try. On the other hand, when you interpret a practice repeatedly, you get to know its components. After the second try, that's when the magic starts to happen. It is precisely when you're not distracted by unknown terminology that you can focus exclusively on polishing your skills. So, once you are familiar with that practice, then you can move on to the next level, which is working on that skill building. And we know that you're going to love the results that repetition brings you. So go ahead and try it when you're studying and you'll see the awesome results you get. Now let's move on to step number three, the evaluation. I like to call this step the, te the chef must taste the soup. So, what happens, as I mentioned earlier, what happens when we are interpreting is very complex. There's a lot going on in our brain. 
brains at the same time. It is absolutely impossible for you to evaluate your performance as you're interpreting. Your brain is just trying to keep up with understanding, decoding the information, finding the target language equivalent, sounding natural, correcting yourself if there's any grammar or syntactical adaptations that you have to do. There's way too much going on for you to also be able to assess how you're doing. So you have to taste the soup. When chefs are cooking, they constantly taste what they're making to see how it's coming out. Don't skip this step, okay? A lot of interpreters skip this step, but this is where you learn the most. The good news is that we have an evaluation technology that is going to help you. It's going to help you to assess your performance, to identify your particular strengths and weaknesses, to get a numerical score. This is something that I was very passionate about when we developed this material. I wanted to be able to give the student an 85%, a 90%, a 60%, a 100%. When I was studying for these tests, I always felt like when I finished, it was like, oh, would I have passed or not? If this had been on a test, would I have aced it or would I have failed? And that's what we've created, the technology to help you seamlessly grade yourself, okay? So to do the evaluation on a platform, you're going to be able to upload your audio recording, your voice recorded interpretation directly onto our platform. And this makes the grading process a piece of cake. So this third evaluation, what does it consist of? You're going to be listening to your best recording. Remember, you did several takes, several repetitions. You're going to choose the one you like the most, and you're going to listen to it while you read the original text, the original transcript. And you're going to basically be comparing what you said to what's written on the transcript. Again, if you're not studying with our material, don't skip this step. Listen to what you recorded as you follow along with a written document. And pause it any time that you see that you made a mistake. And take note of your mistake. And then continue playing. And do that until you've gone through your full recorded performance. And this is super, super important. Okay? So from Lab 11 on, you're going to be grading your interpretation of each vocabulary unit. Basically, you're going to be grading it either correct, if what you heard appears as one of the options that we give you, Incorrect if you didn't say anything at all, or if you said the original word in the source language, or if you said something that you know is incorrect, or you're going to be marking it as research. Because sometimes the options we give you, you say, you know what, I want to research that further. What I said doesn't appear in there. Don't just focus on, I've always said it like this, so I'm just going to continue saying it like this, or a friend of mine told me that that's how you say it. Take that as an opportunity to check yourself and really review a reputable dictionary or glossary. When you're done checking your practice, the system calculates your score. So let's take a look at step number three. So we go here. This is the information that you're going to need for your certificate of completion. And then you go on to the actual evaluation. So in this case, we're going to upload the audio file. So you've recorded yourself and you're basically going to be choosing that recording. If you recorded yourself on a computer or on your iPhone, what you're going to be doing is you're going to email yourself that audio recording, and then you're going to download it from your email. So then you attach it from your downloads file. So this is how it works for step number three, and we're super, super excited about this because this really makes the um, evaluation process much, much smoother. So here we have, I recorded this practice, my interpretation of this practice. We're going to listen to what I said. And as soon as we see that this first scoring unit, as you can see, um, this is the way real tests work, by the way. There are certain words that are underlined. All of these words that are underlined are scoring units. Those are the words I have to interpret correctly to get a point. If I don't, I lose a point. Okay? So this is the way it works in real life. I'm going to listen to myself, and anytime I hear a scoring unit, first I'm going to hear how I interpreted it, and then as soon as I hear my interpretation, I'm going to click on it. So let's play the recording. So Justice Department, I got that correct. Then we have Central Records of Audio. 
Um, one moment, my company manager is telling me that you guys are unable to hear the audio. So let's try if I disconnect my microphone. Let's see if that works. Okay. Let's play it again. Spain. The office clerk from the. Okay, great. So I get Justice that. Justice Department's regional management office. Okay, regional management office. This in Andalusia. I said office clerk. Tia Granada certifies. So I hear certify. I got that correct. That on this date. So as you can see, anytime that I click on a scoring unit, the system automatically pauses your audio and you're able to see, did I say anything of these? Let's say I got that one incorrect. Having researched the data. Research. Let's say I also got that one incorrect. From the Let's say I got that one correct. Essential records of convicts and fugitives. There is no evidence. Let's say I want to research that. Of a prior criminal record under the name of Juana Martinez Rosa with a national ID number. Let's say I got that one incorrect. One, two, four, three, five. This certification reflects the interested party's criminal interested party got criminal that record correct. on the date of issuance and is released so solely for the purpose of international adoption. Purpose of regional manager. Regional manager. Office clerk, Sigmundo Garcia, Granada. Okay, excellent. So I finished checking my whole practice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the submit button. Now, it's going to tell you, first of all, these are the units you have to research. So I go to uh, a, a reputable source dictionary glossary. I look it up. By the way, if you're not studying with our material, this is also what you should do. And then I say, you know what? I got that one correct. And you submit it. And here we have a, a very specific indication of how you did. Each one of my vocabulary units, what the proper target language equivalents are, and how you graded yourself. Okay? So we have a breakdown. And voila, we got a score. So we know exactly how we did. Any more than 80%, we should move on. Any less, 79% or less, we should keep going. But we are also going to be able to voice record. We're also going to be able to take a record of uh, how we did in a more detailed fashion. So here, for example, the title of the lab was Criminal Record. Okay. And how many times I did this lab? Let's say in the total I did it three times. This was a site translation lab. The reason why we have these options up here is because we're going to be also offering very soon this year, we're going to be having uh, material to prepare for state exam and then to prepare for the federal exam. And we have consecutive practices and site and, and simultaneous practices as well. Here we're able to grade ourselves in a very detailed fashion and accuracy from one to 10 on completeness from one to 10. How natural were the terms that I used? How were my grammatical and syntactic adaptations? How was my hesitation? How fluent was I? Was I able to correct myself smoothly? Did I have a poker voice? It's very important to have a poker voice when you're interpreting especially sight translation. How was my volume? How was my pace? Now, this is a very, very important thing. Um, when we uh, work in sight translation, we're the ones who set the pace. So if you could hear it in my audio, I wasn't rushing it. You don't have to be like in simultaneous rushing to keep up. So you're the one who determines the pace. So again, whether you're working with our materials or not, when it's time to render the document, the meaning of the document and out loud, take your time, especially if you notice that there's a comma or a period, 
take your time to read ahead of what's coming up and then begin. Or if you notice that you're hesitating, that you're stumbling, that you're doubting, that you're saying, um, uh, uh, put your top lip and your bottom lip together, gather yourself and then begin again. Okay. So here I'm going to make comments. For example, um, speak with a higher volume. Okay. And these are my comments and I submit it. And then we get an actual certificate of completion so we can keep track of, ourse of ourselves, how we did. So my self-evaluation gave me 7.2 and I know exactly what I have to work on. And then we got the score. So this is the beauty of uh, um, our method, that it allows you to actually keep specific track of how you're doing. That's step number three. The last thing I want to share with you guys is a little bit about uh, this innovative program that we worked with a team of experts. We really, this has been a labor of love. Uh, we have made sure that we work with the best people. Um, we have special uh, people that are um, federally certified court interpreters, that are trainers, myself a psychologist. Uh, we have a PhD linguist who also helped to structure this program. We worked with an attorney who has uh, many, many decades of experience in different uh, fields of law. We worked with a doctor to help make sure that our medical terms are accurate. We worked with specialists in e-learning. We've worked with specialists in pedagogy. So we really have made sure that our team focused on making sure the bilingual terminology is accurate, making sure that the legal scenarios and explanations are true life and making sure that the study techniques and the online tools are the most effective for learning. So what I want to share with you now is for those of you who are preparing for the federal exam, we will be sharing with you a link. We'll be emailing everyone that has uh, um, enrolled to this class and we'll be sending you a link uh, to inspire you if you're working for the federal exam. It's a challenging test and we can give you a few tips. There's a free video that we've created with Athena Matilski to give you some tips on how to prepare. It's like preparing for a marathon. So you really have to um, have a, um, a full approach and, and, a, and a holistic approach to it. And we have all kinds of tips to help you to do that. But whether you're preparing for an exam or not, or you just want to become a better interpreter, make sure you push yourself. And you're going to love the results if you're very, very, very disciplined. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up to questions. Interpret Train wishes you great success in your quest to become the best interpreter you can be. And we're going to be opening it up to questions. I'm going to be checking the chat. For those of you who um, want to uh, go ahead and ask a question, use the chat to ask it. And I'm here to answer anything that you guys have in mind. Anybody? <laughs> okay, while we hear from people in the chat, um, there's another thing that I wanted to share with you Okay, we have the first question. Virginia, this is from Violet. I didn't enroll directly, but I'm very interested in taking these. I'm taking the exam this Saturday, but want to take this course. Okay, we'll definitely be emailing all of you. Thank you so much, Violet, for your question. We're going to be mailing you guys all this information. This one's from Patsy. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. I'm wondering when the state exam course will be available. We are working towards having it ready before uh, the October um, uh, state exam. So we want to have it ready before October, giving you ample time to study for that October test. So we're definitely going to be coming out with it. We're working on uh, polishing the last details to make sure you have the smoothest experience possible. Um, questions for the written exam. Oh, that is a very, very challenging question to answer, Maria. The written exam, I would say, is one of those tests that mostly is going to evaluate your level both in both languages. It's going to see how well you work with idioms, how well you understand idioms, a little bit of legal, legal terminology, but basically if you know basic grammar, it's one of those tests that is really hard to study for because it's kind of measuring how well you know both languages. So it's um, something that if you don't have native command and at like a college level of reading comprehension, it's going to be hard to prepare for that test. But if you do have a college level in both languages, you can definitely study idioms and study general court terminology. 
Um, another question from Nora is, can I use the material with different devices, a smartphone, a desktop? Yes, you can use any computing device that connects to the internet. Zena says, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Zena. We love you. Um, are the labs open to other languages? Actually, we're going, we're working on creating an all English version. For those of you who are interested in working with this material now as it stands, what you can do is you can, in the first step, do the research. So use the tools in that first step to research the vocabulary and create your own materials. And then you'll be able to move on to using our actual um, English court documents and work off of those. Um, Angie, I noticed that there are uh, times at the 5.30. I noticed that the times are at 5.30, so you have to stick to that time slot. Um, Oh, excellent question, Angie. Yes. So for those of you, we have, for those of you who are interested in this material, you can either uh, purchase the materials to work on your own. Um, and we have two different packages. One of them is to have access for three months and the other one is to have access for six months. And then for the instructor led, you're going to have uh, access for three months, but you get to, if you wish, join the classes. So we're going to be, um, every class, of course, we record it. So for those of you who are interested in that program and you can't make a class, you can watch the recorded video and we send it to you via email. We send you the links. So you can watch the video or you don't even have to watch that. You can decide, you know what, I can't make it, but I still want to take the course on my own. Um, does Interpretrain have any study materials this time for the oral exam? Well, yes, this, this site translation course definitely will go a long way for that. Um, and then Brad answered, we have an on-demand version that we'll send to you so you can start when you like, definitely. So you have two options broadly. You can take the class with giving, we're going to be giving you four different um, classes, meaning four different sessions that you can work with us. You can also decide not to attend if you'd like. Or the second option is to take it on demand. So you decide when you log in and out and uh, you decide which pace you take it on. And for that, we have a three month access and a six month access. Angie says, awesome. Oh, thank you so much, Angie. We've worked really, really hard and we're very proud of this material. Again, I have to say that I created this material and my team has uh, been uh, an incredible support because I felt that the material that exists out there is, um, I really wanted to take advantage of technology. And I felt that there are so many tools in technology that we can use to bombard our brains from different angles, to get to know our actual score, to grade ourselves in a more smooth fashion. And I wanted to create that material, uh, taking advantage of all of how our brain works, taking advantage of technology. And that's why we've created this, um, this methodology and, and these labs to help you really get to those hard to reach places and study smart. Um, if you don't have the right tools, you can put in a lot of time, but you're not going to get very far. Um, so we will be launching this. The first class we're going to be having is on May the 6th. So again, for those of you who want to begin on your own and just, get the material and work on your own, you can do that. For those of you who want to take advantage of our class, uh, this is an exclusive offer now because it's our introductory offer. We're not going to be ever offering this option again. In the future, we're going to be having instructor-led classes, but they're going to be much more expensive. So if you, if you are interested in having the instructor help you and to grade your homework and to guide you, do take advantage of the opportunity of, of having these four sessions. But again, we also have people that just want to work on their own, and that's fine too. You can um, have the, the on-demand uh, three months or six months access. Um, is there any possibilities that it might eventually be customized for medical interpretation? We do have uh, uh, some documents in here pertaining to medical, but it's mostly geared towards court interpretation. The same thing happens for our state labs and also our federal labs that are going to be coming out later on this year. Uh, there are a few practices that do have medical terminology, but the bulk of it is court terminology. But for those of you who are needing to prepare in medical interpretation, I do advise that you take these, uh, this learning methodology and apply it. 
So if you're going to be working, uh, for example, with audio practices, not just the site translation mode we saw, but with audio practices, make sure you work with material that has the transcript. So you can first skim it and find out which vocabulary you have to work on. And always drill that vocabulary first. Get that vocabulary out of the way and then move on to the next step which is the actual interpretation. Do we have any more questions? I'd like to ask uh, the group if um, you guys are preparing for the federal exam. If you want, guys want to chime in and let me know which of you are preparing for the federal exam. Are most of you preparing for a state exam? So Maria, Maria, Maria Riera, Maria Riera is preparing. We have a state, we have a federal, state. Oh, the federal, Violet. I hope you do well. Okay, so there are a lot of states. Okay, so we're going to be sending you a link. Let me see if I can share it a little bit here. So this is the examinee handbook for people who are taking the federal test. We're also going to be sharing that. Um, so far, we're going to be, you know, sending you the information for those of you who are interested in this course, whether it's on demand or instructor led. We're going to be sending you that video that I mentioned for those of you who are preparing for the federal exam. And we're also going to be sending you this link to this examinee handbook for the federal test. And even if you're preparing for the state exam, you want to make sure that you know what the requirements of the test are and what the actual logistics of the test are, meaning if it's a site translation, how long am I going to be given? Um, am I told when my time is up, when I have to stop, stop reading and begin interpreting? How many words are in the document? If I'm taking a consecutive exam, um, how many uh, words per chunk am I going to have to memorize or take note of? If it's a simul, how many words per minute? So you really want to make sure most state exams and the federal exam have very detailed descriptions. So the first thing you want to do is become very familiar with the demands of the test and exactly what you're going to be facing. So then you can train in a more targeted fashion. Um, it, Yahi is uh, asking, Yahi Fernandez is asking about the price. So let's see if our manager can chime in on the chat to let you guys know um, for the three month package and for the six month package. Do you know how long the utterance is in the federal oral? This is from Angie. Um, are, Angie, are you asking about the site translation exam? In consecutive, okay. Um, this exam, this here talks about the different tests. Here we go. It's about 876 to 925 words in length. Consecutive interpretation, yeah. And for those of you who are preparing for a com consecutive interpretation, um, we do have a lot of material. We have our manual, we have our videos, and we have our uh, audio practices. So we do urge you to make sure you get those note-taking skills up to par. Um, I'm going to be the instructor. For those of you who are interested in this particular site translation course, I'm going to be the instructor um, guiding you guys through four lessons. And also, I'm going to be assigning homework and giving you detailed, personalized feedback on your homework so I can tell you what to work on. Um, if you need more than six months, then you could definitely reach out to us and we could put together a deal for you. Um, with the instructor included, it's 275. So again, this is an introductory offer. We're not going to be doing this more than for, for now, which is the beginning. So um, do take advantage. If you do want to have an instructor, do take advantage of that. And again, if you can't make it to class, if the schedule doesn't work for you, we always send you the link to access the video so you can watch it on your own time. Um, is this the exact test that will be available? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not really sure uh, the test. Uh, what do you mean by that, Mireya? So QuickBooks, 
I'm sure that's not your name, but I'm calling you QuickBooks because that's what I see here on the screen. The original price with the instructor included, yes. So that would be 275 if you want to take it by yourself for three months or 275 if you want to take advantage of our introductory offer. So you're basically getting free classes, uh, four free classes, or you can take the six month program and take it on your own. Um, so then Brad is sharing with you that uh, we will be, of course, raising the prices later on. So if you don't take the instructor, the four sessions with us today, then you're not going to, you're going to have to pay a little more later on because this is an introductory offer. It's exclusively for the introductory um, phase of this, of this program. So again, you have two options. You can take it with me. We have, we're going to be giving you four lessons to really get you you know, to know the material, to know the, the, the methodology, to feel comfortable with the platform in four sessions. Even if you're not available during those times, don't worry about it because we'll send you the video and you can do it on your own or you can take it by yourself. If you take it by yourself, you have the option of three months, which costs exactly the same as the option of taking it, taking four lessons with me, or you can buy it for six months if you're doing it on your own. When does the introductory offer expire? Uh, well, actually, you have to sign up either today or tomorrow to the course in order to, to, to get my, my free instruction. So for those of you who are interested, you know, you can go ahead and, and try to get it done as soon as possible so you can get it in. So we have any more questions? We have one more minute to go. Are there any more questions? Um, then we have Brad uh, explaining that with the instructor, the three months access will be four ninety five. So after we finish this promotion, if you don't take advantage of this two seventy five, it'll be four ninety five later on. Okay. Uh, we're definitely going to be sending you guys all the information. For those of you who are taking the state exam, this is definitely a great course. So this course goes all the way up to the federal prep, but we give you the level of difficulty for each lab. So I will guide you and tell you, you know, if you're taking the state exam, focus on these. If you're taking the federal, go all the way up to this point. But either way, it's going to be helping you for sure. Um, can we share this info with other interpreters and they get the promo too? Oh, definitely QuickBooks. <laughs> I wish I knew your real name, but definitely share this with, the, share this with everyone, share this with your colleagues, share this with your friends, let them know that they, if they sign on now, they'll get the 275 with my instruction, you know, uh, uh, for free. You won't have to pay for my instruction. Um, so we'll definitely be reaching out to everyone. It's eight. It's um, our time's up. It's eight o'clock. We'll definitely reach out to everyone. We'll be sending you uh, the information that we promised. Um, just feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. We love what we do. We love helping people achieve their goals. We're passionate about what we do. You'll see that we have excellent customer service. So if you have any questions at all, reach out to us. We will be reaching out tomorrow with all this information that we promised. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I wish you guys a lot of success on your exam. I wish you uh, a lot of focus. And uh, we're here to help. Just let us know how we can.